Hi, I'm Amanda Jane Woodall and welcome to my fashion school. So today we're going to be looking at a British style icon that epitomizes the British eccentric. So let's take a look at the life and style of Helena Bonham Carter. Helena Bonham Carter was born on the 26th of May 1966 and she was the third child of Elena and Raymond Bonham Carter. She was part of a political family living in the wealthy suburb of Golders Green in London and she had a very famous relative who was former UK Prime Minister Herbert Henry Asquith. She was dramatic and a strong-willed child who inherited her European mother's beauty and quirky fashion sense. She was a studious child who enjoyed fairy tales and fables and this would be the start of a lifelong love of literature. Her early influence into the acting world was family friend Lisa Harrow, who was a beautiful and well-loved actress who Helena really yearned to be like. The family was very affluent and her parents had careers in merchant banking and psychotherapy and she was taken on global adventures like going on safari which helped her to become a fantastic storyteller. Sadly in 1979 her father was diagnosed with a brain tumour and actually became blinded and paralysed during surgery to remove it and this gave Helena a caring role in her household but she also really was inspired to make the most out of her talents and to pursue a career in the theatrics. The tragedy had made Helena fiercely independent and she put an advert in the casting magazine Spotlight which featured her headshot and this led to her being cast in her first job which was playing Juliet in an advert. She attended the Westminster College and she excelled academically, although she did feel a little bit awkward around her peers when they noticed that she was very beautiful. So she would hide herself away in baggy clothes and never wear any makeup. During a student performance, The Importance of Being Earnest, she was spotted by a BBC agent who cast her as the privileged niece of the vicar in A Pattern of Roses. And this performance led her to be signed by prestigious agent Jeremy Conway, who thought she had a unique presence on camera. And her education was cut short because she went to make a film called Lady Jane and she always felt very inadequate about the fact she hadn't finished her education. And on her first feature film, she would show up to set scruffy in her jeans and massive sweatshirts. And she came across as very aloof because she was just too insecure and frightened to socialise with cast members who included theatre greats like Patrick Stewart. And this film marked her early career being dedicated to costume period dramas and this was something that Helena actually struggled with because she didn't like the idea of being typecast. However, the 80s saw the rise in popularity of the period drama and it is argued by critics that these were some of Helena's finest works. She starred in 1986, A Room With A View, 1993, Howard's End and 1996, The Wings of a Dove for which she received an Oscar nomination. In 1994, she was cast to play Elizabeth in Kenneth Branagh's Frankenstein with Robert De Niro playing his monster. 
Her relationship with Branagh would also cause media scandal as he was actually married to her co-star, Emma Thompson, and he was thought to be romantically linked to Helena. And the two always denied the relationship, but it is suspected that they were a couple from 1995 to 1999. Having had a taste of an edgier role, Helena wanted to take on more challenging parts and be taken seriously as an actor. She played the romantic lead, a lady with motor neuron disease in The Theory of Flight and she was praised for this very brave performance. It took a lot emotionally for Helena to play this character because she drew inspiration from what she had been through with her father's illness. Fight Club was released in 1999 and projected Helena as a modernist as she played a nymphomaniac, therapy surfer, Marla Singer. This film was known for its excessive violence and was seen as an innovation in cinema. And Helena showed that she had the confidence to play any role in cinema. Her style caught the eyes of the media and she was labelled as quirky by some and by others as the worst dressed person in Hollywood. But in truth, Helena is one of the finest examples of the British eccentric and she uses clothing in a very playful way. She creates characters and hides behind layers of fabric and accessories. She combines vintage and period clothing with modern styles like gothic and grunge and this means her style is always quite unpredictable but you can often see her wearing a multitude of hats and costume jewellery. She favours petticoats, corsets, lace and ruffles in her own blend of gothic Victorianism. Her hair is wild and curly and often looks a little bit weathered, unkempt and unbrushed. Her look is also a signature of her collaboration with Tim Burton and he admits that strangely her look is very similar to the characters he drew early in his career. Tim Burton and Helena Bonham Carter met in the year 2000 and they have collaborated on many projects over the years and they are widely seen as one of the most eccentric partnerships in Hollywood. After meeting on set in 2001 on Planet of the Apes, they went on to make eight films together. And these are Big Fish in 2003, Corpse Bride in 2005, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in 2005, Sweeney Todd in 2007, Alice in Wonderland and the sequel 2010 and 2016, and Dark Shadows in 2012. The pair never married, but they actually had two children together, Billy Raymond, who was named after both of their fathers, and Nell, who was named after the generations of Helens that were in Helena's family. They famously lived next door to one another, and both had houses that were decorated in their own unique tastes, until the children were born where they knocked through the hallway so the houses would be joined together, and they saw as much of each other as a normal relationship, but they had their own space that they could retreat to. And Helena describes Tim as a hilarious man and says they had a lot of laughs together, but sometimes on set things could get a bit fractious, particularly in Sweeney Todd when the arguments would spill into their actual lives, but maybe it was worth it because they were both nominated for awards at the Golden Globes. 
She described the couple as having a crazy creative exterior but a practical and sane interior and they really seem to help each other a lot. She helped Tim learn to talk to people because he had extreme shyness and he helped Helena not to overact. In 2013, Burton denied a photo that was published in the Daily Mail which saw him kissing a blonde woman at the premiere of The Wicker Man. In 2014, they amicably separated and they've always said that they had something really special. But after a period of grieving, Helena moved on with Rydag Hombo in 2019. She is also known for playing psychotic witch Bellatrix Lestrange in the Harry Potter franchise and she delights in frightening her new young audience in the streets of London when they see her. As a mature actress, Helena played very complex characters like royalty. She played the Queen Mother in The King's Speech in 2009 and then her daughter Margaret in The Crown series in 2019 and 2020. And she is known for being a bit of a detective when it comes to researching her characters. And she will go to extreme practices like analysing their handwriting and seeking the advice of an astrologer. Helena is a true great of the British acting industry and she has worked on so many different types of projects. She's had a very varied career and worked with some of the most highly commended co-stars. And as far as Helena's style goes, we can learn a lot from her about the British style spirit. She's inventive, she is expressive, she's relaxed and she's decadent and she also spends time learning the theory behind clothing. Featuring recently alongside Millie Bobby Brown in Enola Holmes, it was really nice to see Helena's influence on the young generation. She combines traditionalism and historical dress with progressivism and modernity and that is the base of all British artistry. So we have come to the end of this video but I will see you again in my follow-up video when we're going to keep looking at the British eccentrics. And the pair have never divulged.